Help us welcome the irreverent reverend, your freaky deacon, the one, the only, Mr. Art Zealous. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and good morning all of you venerable saints of art and craft. You know, friends, we make art best when we make art daily, so let's make something religiously. Friends, today's artistic inspiration is dog computers. Let's blue sky the concept of a canine interface device to facilitate interspecies communication and constant treat dispersal. So grab your crayons, your banjo, your typewriter, whatever tools you love for whatever art you make. And let's make something great today. And if you find yourself a devil by blockages, you will dial the number down there on your screen and we will find your artful solutions live right here on the TV. So first, let us thank the Art Zealous Youth Singers. Let us thank good old Agnes on the organ who is keeping our time today. Thank you, Agnes. And folks, a lady who needs no introduction, Hoot and holler, please, for my wife, Belle! Now, Belle is traveling through France this week on missionary work, bringing berets to sidewalk artists who have lost their cultural identity. Folks, as you know, Belle is the brains of this operation, so that's why everything you're about to watch went wrong. So, it's time to make art. How do we start? We are devoted, for all great art starts in the butt. A grand idea is nothing if one cannot sit down one's buttocks, so let us shake loose the wiggles from an otherwise perfect rump. Shake them out, shake loose the wiggles, shake them out, my friend, shake them out and sit. Woo! Congratulations. You are now a serious artist. Now, art sounds smart, but how do you start? Art dreamy! We art dreamy. The first step is to imagine the outcome of your wildest success and jot down what it is you see. Say, hey there, perfect dog computer. Don't you just look dreamy? I sure do like your dog translating device. That's got to be the most important thing, right? You want to talk to your dog. You want your dog to talk to you. I want to talk to my dog. Yeah. Say, hey there, dog computer. I want to be comfortable for the dog to wear. Yeah. It's got to be comfortable for the dog. It's not comfortable for the dog. Why are we, do why are we doing this? You don't want your dog to be uncomfortable. No, no. Just jot down what it is you see. No. Just jot down. There we go. There we go. Say, hey there, dog computer. Sure do like your ab adorableness. Oh, yeah. That's right. A dog computer has got to be adorable. What else? Say, hey there, dog computer. I love that you can make it so that my dog can understand me. Now, my dog can understand me perfectly. You know little coconuts. Little coconuts has a perfect command of human speech, but a lot of dogs can't. Or at very least, they pretend like they can't. Say, hey there, dog computer. What I love about you is your enhanced dog abilities. Verging on $10 million man status. What are we talking about? A $10 million mutt? Lee Majors, call me. Call me. I got what you need for a reboot. It's time, Lee Majors. Okay. Now that we've dreamed of perfection, we're always traveling in the right direction. 
So I've organized here what I think are the criteria for success in the most important order. And the first one is dog comfort. Let's make that number one. Two, dog to person communication, person to dog communication, and then lower down on the list, important, important certainly, but not as important as dog comfort, is something like enhanced dog abilities. And then finally, adorableness. Dogs generally need no help being adorable, so it's okay if this one is a, at the bottom of our, our list of criteria there, because for the most part, dogs are doing okay in that direction. So as long as we keep these dreams in mind, we always know we're traveling in the right direction. But how do we know that we're making it rightly? We aren't lightly. Friends, we learn what it is we're doing only by doing. So whatever art you're making, be it song or sculpture or strawberry souffle, rough out your first ideas quickly and lightly. And let us take five minutes now to meet the unfamiliar with a playful boldness. Let's take a look at our jots here. Okay, I'm just gonna jot this down a little bit. And uh, you can see that I've got, got a camera again, and I'm just using a, a pen and a paper. It's all I'm using, pen and a paper. Last time we did it with a, a pencil and a paper, and that just didn't, it didn't work quite as good, did it? No, it wasn't very viewable. Now, a pen is not the lightest way that you can not the lattice way that you can draw, but it's very, very viewable on camera. So we're going to use this here and know that, that we can always do things to, uh, uh, to get a light version of this next. And I'll talk about what those are when we come to them. All right, so first, let me put in just a dog, like a quick dog area here. I'm going with a basic coconuts type dog. And the coconuts type dog is uh, a universally beloved dog. Not everyone has a dog. Your dog may look like this or it may not, but we're gonna put a dog in here. We just talk about how the apparatus interacts with the dog. For the dog interface of the dog computer, we need to have a dog. So I'm gonna put a little coconut top, top ears on this beauty. There we go. I'm gonna put the, the bepuzzled coconuts expression, the coconuts uh, tongue sticking out, his curiously black lips. <laughs> Always so cute and dramatic. We got a little, little, little hiney there. This weird little puff tail. Here we go. Look at that thing. Give it the spikes like it's a dragon tail. Okay, so here, here we got a real quick, light sketch. A coconut style dog, right? So where are the places that we're gonna want to consider putting an interface item for the dog's comfort. The first one that occurs to me is, of course, the collar, because the collar is the item of clothing that most dogs are already comfortable wearing. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but Coconuts does not wear a collar. <laughs> he's too proud and intelligent to bear the indignity. So, uh, unless he's on a walk, in which case he's in a whole little harness, he doesn't wear a collar. Um, so I assume if he ever gets lost, he'll just, you know, contact a policeman and and uh, and bark in Morse code or something to uh, to help him be relocated. So we got the harness a la coconuts here. We've got the the collar a la coconuts. What if a little camera hung down off it? Is that maybe an idea? And then the third place that I'd like to explore for a, a dog interface device is on the tail. The the tail is enormously expressive. What can the motion of the tail tell us? If it's wagging, is that good? Is there such a thing as bad wagon? There's definitely curious wagon. I know Coconut, sometimes he goes, wag. When he doesn't know what's happening, he's like, wag, is that true? Wag, what's this about? Wag. That's Coconuts. Coconuts is an incredible dog. We got about one minute and 17 seconds left here. So I'm, I'm sketching out the important things here. Okay, so this is the three main areas here. We got the harness, we got the collar, we got the, the wagger. So these are the areas that I'm gonna want to explore. Is there anything else? Okay, Agnes. Agnes is, thank you, Agnes. 
It's a little over dramatic, Agnes. Okay, Agnes is telling us we got one minute left here. Uh, wrap it up, Brett. Uh, Art. Wrap it up, Art. And uh, we got, uh, let's see, uh, maybe some kind of beanie. Dogs wearing a hat. That's going to be a little non-standard, so it's a little uncomfortable. Uh, probably where a dog looks is going to be instructive about his state of mind. It's possible there's some kind of computer vision that, that looks to see where a dog is looking and uses that as an indication. Um, so maybe something over the eyes. These are areas that we're considering, but we're just going lightly here. Nothing is etched in stone. What about some kind of like snout mounted can- that, that's gonna feel like a muzzle. I don't think that's gonna be comfortable for a pup. So let's go ahead and leave that out. Let's leave that out as a notion. Okay, there we go. Little coconuts, look at him, look at him, look at him go! A little cyber coconuts. All right, okay, I can see I'm out of time here. I can see I'm out of time here. Let me just number these things so that we can talk about them. We got uh, the collar, we got the, the harness, we got the tail wagon. Probably we're not gonna go with the muzzle camera, but let's go ahead and, and demark that. And uh, we are out of time here on this. But um, I feel like there's something missing. Let's, let's, uh, let's do a little bit of an exploration here real quick. Just another 30 seconds about this collar computer, how that's going to work. Okay. Bear with me. I know I'm going over time. I know Agnes is just sitting over there looking at her run a show. She's livid. She is livid. Livid at me. But that would not be the first time that Agnes and I have, have feuded. Certainly not. Certainly not. Here we go. Um, what about some kind of dongle that hangs over the dog's head? Like just out of his periphery, it's able to... to get his, can, get, look at his eye movement, also maybe get his bark movement. Yeah, okay, That's, uh, that looks very comfortable, very light, very inobtrusive. I think, I think that is the way that we're gonna wanna go with that. I think that's not, it's not bad. It's not bad for now. Congratulations, my friends. Because now you and me, on only five minutes and 30 seconds, Agnes, that's right. Oh, she's sitting over there roiling. Come at me, Agnes. Come at me. You want a piece of me in front of all these folks? You think you can take me, Agnes? Well, assuredly you can, but you probably wouldn't do it in front of all these folks. And you say, you say, Zell, this ain't a work of art. This is only a little bit of doodles. And to that, you know what I say to that? I say coconuts. Every work of art ever made was started from scratch, just like yours. So you want to keep going? Me too. And that's what happens when you cross your heart for art. If you commit only five minutes, you get a heck of a lot more. And friends, the hardest part is just to start. So how do we make it good as can be? Art progressive! We are progressive. Great art is an iterative process. We ain't got to make it perfect, friends, if we can always make it better. So let's shoot the breeze, keep some companies, and let's make some art together. And folks, these phone lines, you can hear them, they is blowing up. So, hey, let's make it official. The Creative Confessional of the Airwaves is now open. So you call that number with any artistic worry, big or small, and we will strategize your salvation. You've got crafting consternations, we have your artful solutions. And everyone is trying to call friends, so if you must leave a message, please do, please do. And I'm gonna switch here from my, uh, my pen and paper doodler to my, my, favorite, my favorite art tool the tablet computer. So I took a picture of my doodle and now I brought it into my tablet computer 
Let's see what we can do with it. Let's see what we can do with it. And um, we're going to have... Oh, nope. Ain't that just... Ain't that just what you'd expect. Lot of troublesome nonsense. There we go. There we go. We got 25 minutes. We got 25 minutes, 25 minutes only to make some art together. We're going to take your phone calls. We're going to take your phone calls. We're going to make some art together. The phone lines is now open. Let's see what we can do in 25 minutes. See that I got my coconut sketch in here. I took a picture of it with my, my iPad computer. I brought it into Procreate, which is the software I use. I like it. And I dropped down the opacity real low. So I'm, I'm, I made it light. Remember how I said art lightly? Oh, it looks to me, it looks to me like we got a familiar, familiar character in the chat. We got Nicole Carico, Carico, is that how it's pronounced? Carico Jackson. Oh, she says that Agnes is gonna be furious and coconuts. Coconuts, she says. Oh, that's so good to see you. It's so, so good to see Saint Nicole. Saint Nicole is, is uh, uh, the trusted friend and ally of Belle Zealous, and so she is traveling with her on her mission to France, so it's so good to see her in the chat. Let's see what she what she thinks about this drawing of coconuts. This this dog computer drawing of coconuts. Okay. So um I'm gonna I'm gonna drill down on this collar concept. So I'm gonna want I'm gonna want for the head to be reasonably articulated in this view. We're gonna to wanna to see what we got here. And so we're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and spend some time making the head draw on here. There we go. Okay. All right. I don't think that's a very good coconut. I'm going to keep I'm going to keep noodling on that one. Oh, it looks like it looks like we got a call. We're going to put it through. We're going to put it through. Hello, Art. This is St. Peter out of Poughkeepsie. I love drawing horses, but I'm terrible at horse anatomy. What do you recommend for me to get up to speed on that beautiful breed? Thanks, Art. Love the program. Oh, well, St. Peter of Poughkeepsie, thank you so much for calling. Oh, yeah. Horses are one of the finest things that you can draw. Like, I think you'll agree that most folks get into art so that they can make better horses. You know, if you're doodling and you're Trapper Keeper, you want to, you, wanna, you know, daydream about things you love, such as horses. And that's what you do. You start drawing them, you drawing them down, drawing their pretty manes, their pretty tails. Sometimes they have elaborate saddles. Sometimes you are riding on their back. Sometimes you're rendering them with you, with your husband, Freddie Prince Jr., riding behind you, and his pretty hair streaming out behind him. So, what do you do if you uh, lack a command of horse anatomy? Well, as you can see with my uh, instructive allegory of dog anatomy here, my command of dog anatomy is not so terribly strong, but yet I'm able to render a dog suitably. So, the first thing is, you know, go ahead and take a crack at it. You're probably better than you think. The second thing is that all of these things, anatomy, draftsmanship, all of them are learned skills. None of these things are magic. They are a process. So, you find a book, or more likely you Google how to draw a horse, and you're going to get a, a little diagram that gives you a four or five step thing that will have you... First, you'll do a little stick figure, probably, with the general proportions of the horse. And then you're going to probably draw um, uh, a, an outline of the horse. And then you'll fill it in with some of the details. And maybe, maybe the next tutorial you do is going to have some more elaborated horse anatomy. It's going to have, it's going to have uh, you know, uh, the musculature of the horse. It's pretty, it's pretty nostril details. So uh, the first horse you make is probably going to look a little bit like this coconuts, uh, a crude a crude facsimile which mocks the source material. But eventually you're going to get that you're going to get that up to speed. You're going to get that horse and your horses will be better and better through your 
iteration. So St. Peter from Poughkeepsie, thank you so much for calling. You just uh, you just go ahead how to how to doodle horses and you just three horses in you're gonna be you're gonna be making horses for all the ages. That is my that is my pledge to you. So I hope you call in and I hope you cross your heart for art. I would love to see you making heart every day. I would love to see you making horses every day. Like and then you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't be stuck like I am here drawing your dog's eyes with progressively scribblier circles. You can almost see in in coconut's expression here how dubious he is of this rendering. How crude he, the subject of the drawing, is aware of the drawing itself. So what do you, you know, what do you do there? What do you do there? Um, he's looking a little more like a walrus. Move his, yeah, that, that Lorax mustache job is probably gonna, um, and I got, I got, I got about five minutes in on this thing, which means I got about 20 minutes remaining. I probably don't want to be spending too terribly much longer on the head because it's really just a, a dog placeholder for this dog computer, where and how this dog computer goes. But because it is my little dog, Coconuts, and because I love him so, I am finding myself uh, fidgeting, fidgeting with his drawing. His chest is a little bit too beefy here because I'm, I'm a student of, of Coconuts himself. I look at him all night and day while I pet him. I, lo I love him so dear. And uh, so we're gonna get his little ears here. Look at those little coconut ears. <laughs> his accusing expression. It's, it's better than the curly Q ears. Yeah, it's a start. It is a start. There we go. Let's, let's wrap it up on this, this dog head material here. Can I stop myself? Let's see. Not quite yet. <laughs> Not quite yet. Not quite yet. It's got to be, doesn't have to be perfect, but it's got to be like a damn sight more perfect than this. Folks, everybody is trying to call that number down below. They're going to talk to me live on the air if they can. Heck, that'd be great. But if not, you just leave a message. You just leave a message. We'll play that on the air. All right, folks. There we go. Too Sharpie. Okay. Oh, oh, looks like we have another, another call coming through. I'm gonna put this call through. Here we go, here we go. Looks like it's a message here. We're gonna we're gonna pipe it through. Hello, Art. I love the program. You are my very favorite, you are my very favorite Sunday activity. Art, my problem is this. I love to write the love poetry, but right now I cannot because my heart is breaking. Oh, Art, what do I do when I cannot find the love in my heart to put love on the page? Thank you, Art. Oh, okay. Um, I don't, this saint did not identify herself, but um, she, uh, saint, caller, saint, caller, uh, first of all, let me say that I'm so sorry that your heart is breaking. Boy, I, I, oh, I, that's just, that's just a terrible, terrible, all right, okay. Okay, there's a, I'm trying to create a mood, Agnes, and if you, if you, if you interrupt me with that, I, I know you're entrusted, you know what, no. Agnes is right, I am wrong, she's keeping us on schedule. That's, uh, we got, we got 16 minutes remaining, roughly. Um, caller, I'm sorry that you're experiencing heartbreak right now. And I'm sorry that makes it hard for you to write your love poetry. Let me first say that everyone, perhaps, maybe, maybe 
almost everyone in life will experience heartbreak of some kind. No, everybody, every single, every single person will experience heartbreak of some kind. And as painful as that is and as agonizing as that is, it, it does mean that your heart was swollen at one time. It means that your heart was full at one time. And I just wanna, I wanna register that that is a very, very fine thing indeed. That, that your heart was gladdened and so when it is no longer glad, you feel, you feel the pain of that as, as, as heartbreak. So I'm sorry that's happening. I'm glad, I'm glad that your heart was enriched at one time. Now, as to the question of what do you do about that? How do you, how do you sit down and you make your art? Well, that's a great question because you, know, you, you don't always feel that inspired when you're glum, when you're depressed, when you're heartbroken. Sometimes you're, you're doing everything you can to just pull yourself up off the floor. And that's okay. That's okay if you need to take a break and just have a big sob off. Need to have a, need to have a weep day. Need to put on a Pixar movie and uh, force yourself to do uh, singing in the rain with, uh, on, the, on the floor of the bathroom. That's, that's okay if you don't feel like making art. If you, if you spend the time to, to feel your feelings, you're doing the right thing. But let me, let me say, Caller, that in addition to that, that the making of art is one of the ways that you can confront your heartbreak. It's one of the ways that you can process these feelings that you have. You know, when we're, we're finding it so hard to move, when we're lying on the floor, sobbing, it's real easy to get stuck. It's real easy to get mired in that heartbreak. And if you're able to, if you're able to write some love poetry, or maybe you, you do something, uh, a form of art that you don't, you don't do, you don't do traditionally. Maybe you, you journal. Maybe you sit down and you, you write a journal for no one to see but you, and it's a, it's a work of art where you, you write to yourself, or you, you write to your loved one, or you write to the cruel world that broke your heart. Write a letter and let that be your work of art. Don't feel any expectation to create anything you're going to exhibit. Don't feel an expectation to show what you're making to anyone else in the world. Just make some art between you and your heart. And, and caller, I hope and I expect that that will have the capacity to bring you insight, to bring you transformation, uh, to express those poisons and to, to help you find just a little bit of peace. And, and, and that comes in, in waves. So you may get peace and you may find that tomorrow you have to you have to start your art all over again. And so I know, I know this is a classic to a man with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. I know you're like, I don't want to make art. That my advice would be, well, try, did you try making art? What, <laughs> what about if you made art through the pain? I, I understand, I understand that this was a predictable response, but uh, it's predictable for a reason, because um, I do believe it. I, I have seen it in my own life and um, you know, friends, there are not many things in this world that, that bring you peace when you're experiencing heartbreak. I'm sorry to say. And indeed, sometimes you just, you just have to have a, a little bit of no peace and experience that heartbreak. But, but art can be one of those things that help you to process it and help you to get a little perspective, a little calm, and a little healing. So, caller, I'm sorry for your heartbreak and... Uh, if you decide you want to show it to us, boy, we would love to see it. Thanks, thanks for calling, huh? All right, whew, that was a sad one. We've got 10 minutes and 37 seconds remaining, and I've got most of this, half, I've used up half my, half my time and some. This is a 25 minute sprint here. So I've used up 15 minutes 
just doing a love letter to coconuts here. So this is a, a coconut illustration. And the computer part of this dog, dog computer, is almost completely ignored. So why don't we, uh, why don't we start getting the, putting the, the computer in this dog computer? So I'm going, with, I'm going with a collar apparatus and a tail apparatus. I have never seen a dog who enjoyed having something tied to its tail. But maybe there's a way to do that very lightly. I think we're going to have to test it on old coconuts here. We're going to have to get some kind of, kind of ribbon or something tied around his tail, see what he thinks if he can eventually make peace with the abomination. Because um, at the end of the day, anything that makes the wagging of a dog's tail more conspicuous is better. I wonder, okay, here, 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 how's this, how's this? So if you're gonna make your dog's tail wagging into a sensor, right, an indicator of, of something about the dog, do you need to have a physical artifact on there? In the same way that we're gonna be using this this eyeball antenna thing to use a fisheye lens to, to track the dog's vision. Uh, is there, maybe this, uh, maybe it could just track the dog's tail. Right? Or, um, or perhaps we could, um, we could attach a golf ball to, I'm sorry, a ping pong ball to it, like mo tracking. Or maybe, maybe just, uh, there's a, an infrared, uh, the, the dog computer box comes with a tiny little, little, oh, coconuts. Can you hear him? There you, there you go. It appears that Coconut would like to render a critique about the idea of tying something on his tail. It turns out he prefers that it not be done. Okay, so what if it was like, what if it was like a little, a little, little banaca canister of, of infrared sensitive paint that's invisible to the human eye, but you give the dog's tip of the, his tail a blast with it and it lasts until you give them a bath. And you know, you get a little notification on your phone if, uh, if uh, the computer sensor is not able to read it. It uses infrared to track the tail by, you know, by this, this splotch of paint on the end that is invisible to the human eye, but which the camera on the collar can see. Okay, let's continue to talk about, okay, so we know our first criteria here is dog comfort. So like, let's, let's go with the, let's, let's bail the tail uh, idea. And, um, and uh, think of this as a, uh, the only direct way that the dog experiences this is via the collar. Dogs used to wearing a collar, most dogs used to wearing a collar, so it's not gonna be heavy, it's not gonna be um, cumbersome, it's not gonna impede the dog's movement. In fact, this is the most luxurious collar a dog can wear. It's so light and uh, streamlined it cannot catch on anything. It's, a, it's of a space age material like, a, like an Apple watch band. It's very beautiful. And it's, and it's ringed with minute sensors that are able to, uh, to detect the dog's barks and growls through his, his glottis. And uh, it's also able to, to directionalize sound into the dog's ears. So if you're, if you're uh, calling, calling the dog on your CB radio, if you're a uh, you're fighting some bad guys and you're like, I need backup, coconuts! Coconuts, I need backup! Woof! He'll, you know, he'll, he'll hear it, woof, through the collar and, and he'll come running and he'll jump on their back and knock them over and their Uzi falls on the ground and then you got the Uzi and then you and coconuts is heroes again. Okay, <laughs> you're heroes again. Because, you know, intermittently you and your dog, coconuts, if that is your dog's name too, will be a hero uh, I mean, you know, dramatize in, in a way that I expect like uh, the $10 million man would be, or hell, I'd settle for an 18. I'd settle for an 18. Okay, so we got our, our collar apparatus right here. So let's say that for the most part, the dog collar on the front is indistinguishable or not indistinguishable from a dog collar. But then on the back, it's got this tiny little, tiny little dongle, this tiny little antenna that sticks up. And think of this like, Think of this like uh, one of those like lavalier microphones that, that those like very, very inconspicuous little lavalier microphone jammers. We got five minutes, 41 seconds remaining. I, I better pick up my pace here. One of those like little lavalier microphones that sometimes opera singers wear or game show hosts wear that point, point at their, point at their, uh, their mouths. And hey there, coconuts. 
How you doing, coconut? You wanna, you wanna come over here, say hi? Oh, coconuts, come here. Come here. Oh, oh coconuts. Oh, coconuts, how you doing? Oh, sweet coconuts. Sweet, sweet coconuts. You want, folks wanna see you. Folks wanna see that dog. They wanna see that dog, coconuts. Ain't he beautiful? Ain't he beautiful, folks? Folks, I ain't got time to be petting this dog. I gotta be making a... Leva Agnes is telling us we got five minutes remaining. I'll, I'll get back to work. I'll get back to work. Mwah. Okay. Good dog. What a good little dog. What a good little dog. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. So we've got like a little little Wi-Fi emitter on there, but I don't think we're gonna go with the physical item on this at all. So this like lavalier like little stem that comes out and it extends up over the dog's head. And it goes right out of the dog's, I'm hoping that it could be made to work that it goes right over the dog's periphery. So the dog is not even able to see this thing and there's no discernible weight. When, he's, when he moves, it does not sway too terribly. And um, my hope is that, that this, little, this little dongle will have some sort of mi microscopic little nodule at the top. And that nodule is two parts tiny little module at the top and that module is two parts it's a fisheye camera and it's a it's a microphone so the the fisheye camera and I'm gonna do like an enlarged view of this nodule here the fisheye camera is able to to track the dog's eye movements and so know which way the dog is looking where the dog's attention is then the the microphones in the dongle and in the collar itself will pick up the dog's uh, subglottal whines and nickers and barks and growls. And so its vocalizations will then be paired with uh, a playlist of the things that the dog are looking at and, and that that will infer meeting. And then the, we'll also again remember that in addition to the dongle sticking out of this collar, that it's got a camera at the place where the dongle connects to the collar where it tracks the movement of the tail via an, an infrared camera that, uh, that bounces back a signal from the invisible to the human eye, but infrared luminescent uh, tip of the dog's tail. Okay, so that's, that's three pieces of information right there that, that communicate to the dog. I think you set that up and you let it run for a week and Machine learning can tell you everything that your dog is thinking with some degree of certainty. Now, that would be if it was just analyzing your dog to, to see the peculiarities of your dog, but then that's also matched up against the, the database of all of the, the dogs that we've tested this on. And we have tested this on literally dozens of dogs. There's not that much variation. All dogs' hearts can be known. They're all pure. All dogs are intrinsically good, and so the machine learning analyzes this and is able to and is able to, um, to 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 interpret everything about your dog based on what it knows about all dogs. Okay, now that should be sufficient to to be the dog computer. So, um, is is there? Uh, so uh, we've also got directional speakers in the collar that are communicating your messages to the dog. We've got, the dog is able to communicate with you. You're able to communicate with the dog. Because then you know, the, when the dog's like, I would like to play with my ball. The computer knows that now and interprets it and it just, it, it says it to you in, in plain English. I would like to play with my doll. Did I say doll? I would like to play with my hedgehog. And, and it says that, it says that in the dog's voice, and you have a choice of dog's voices. Oh, oh man. Agnes, will you, will you get off my jock today? You just will not stop riding me. We got one minute remaining, folks, and don't Agnes just love that. She sees how far away I am from my completed work. What is, what am I even drawing here? Who would, if you were not listening, how would you know, how would you know what I was, this is a fisheye lens. If you, how would you know that there's a microphone in this? Ah, coconuts, coconuts. 
That's right, I have Scratch whispering in my ear. I have him tearing me up inside. Oh, this ain't good enough. This ain't expressive enough. Oh, this ain't gonna work. This ain't a work of art. And to all that I say, Scratch, I caught you. I caught you, Scratch, with your, your pernicious message and I'm gonna take you, all your negative thoughts, all your negative whispers. I'm gonna ball them up in a coconut. I'm gonna throw them in the ocean. Coconuts to you. Coconuts to you. I am just okay. No, I'm just fine. <laughs> The art is just okay. Okay. Whoa. Oh. Okay. And time is up here. Time is up here. So uh, we're stopping. Very leisurely, we're stopping. Uh, but not before I, I put a, a, a tiny little reflective daub on my, my thing here. Okay. There we go. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. All right, friends. So we're going to take a look here at the criteria, the criteria, and we're going to see, we're going to see how I did. We're going to take a look at this. We're going to see how I did. Okay. Dog comfort. It looks pretty chill to me. I think I feel I did pretty good on this. It's not too conspicuous. We may have to go with a tail paint as opposed to a, a tail nodule, but I think that'll keep it comfortable for the dog. I feel like that is at odds with criteria five, which is adorableness, because I think the dog is more adorable with a thing on his tail, but ultimately I think that dog comfort supersedes it um, quite obviously. Okay, so dog to person communication, yes. Person to dog communication, yes. And enhanced dog abilities, you know, not really. We don't got much million dollar dog, $10 million dog tech on this beauty. It's just, it's basically just coconuts with uh, the ability to communicate here. So I, I guess I'm going to go ahead and give myself, I'm going to give, give myself a pass on that one. I don't feel like that one is fully, fully expressed. No, I don't feel like that one's fully expressed at all. So, how do you feel about that? If you're like me, you're probably a little bit conflicted about the work of art you just created and, and feel that with enough time, you can do better. And that is, that is A-OK. -okay. Art proudly! We must art proudly, even when we know that what we have just produced is not as great as what we are capable of. Never apologize for being where you are right now. Your very favorite artist was once a beginner too. And so we must not let perfect be the enemy of good. We want to see what you made. So take a snap, send a picture of your art to the number down below. Maybe we can show it on the TV. If we can't show it today, we go and get it in today. If you want to keep working on it and send it in, we hope you will. And we'll show it next week. So let's see what we got. Okay. All right. Take a look at this. This is beautiful. This is obviously from our Zeppelin race car. And this is, uh, this is uh, Saint Leon of Imagination. That's a beautiful, beautiful Zeppelin race car. So well colored there. This is from Carol and Fran walking in a wiener wonderland. Ain't that adorable. Ham? Ham, I hope, I hope, well, I, you know, I expect that, that, that uh, Carol and Fran are watching today because they are my biggest dog-based fans, I think, and they are uh, true saints of art and craft. Look at this beautiful thing, walking in a winter wonderland. And then we got a happy Halloweener, another piece of ham merch. I can't wait to see a ham-branded dog computer that's specially made for a wiener dog, uh, wiener dog's ridiculous body. And we got uh, Saint Shirley of Glendale here with her, um, her lost and found poster. And uh, this week, she uh, she just took an opportunity to, to color a, a color a book of Spider Man, and boy, you know I am just delighted that she she made time to make some art with us. That was such a treat. Oh, folks, that's that's so nice. Thank you for sending that in. Well, folks, you knew this you knew this moment was coming. Cause I am asking you right now, right now in this moment to make a pledge to make art every single day. I want you to cross your heart for art to make art every single 
day for the rest of your life. It can be five minutes. Anyone can do this. And in return, in return for you crossing your heart and making that promise, I promise you a real, actionable path to mastery. You can be a master in any artistic pursuit. Because friends, talent is nice. Sure, it's, talent's nice. But great work requires skill. Skill requires repetition. Repetition requires habit. This is what you came here to do. So friends, won't you join me? Call the number down below and cross your heart for art. Now friends, back in the old days, we'd all leave this tent, we'd have a big pancake breakfast with some artistic fellowship, some strong coffee, some fresh juice, both adulterated and infantilized. And soon again, friends, we will. Soon again, we will. But for now, Sunday noon's our honeymoon. And, and darling, wherever in France you are, I hope you're doing the good work of making folks cross their heart for art. Bringing art to the world, bringing joy to me. So goodbye here. Goodbye for now, friends. We hope that you will join us next week when we make personal space stations. Goodbye!